Uh, the House has resumed. Members, the House is debating the first reading of the Electoral Administration Amendment Bill No. 2. The Honourable Leanne Dalziel has the call. Just over nine minutes remaining. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I shall, I shall enjoy taking that entire nine minutes oh, on, the, um, on addressing the uh, support yeah. that our, our party has for the I'm introduction done. of the Electoral Administration Amendment Bill No. 2 and also uh, to uh, say to the Government that we will be scrutinising this very carefully at Select Committee, as we always do uh, with electoral law reform, uh, with respect to any changes that may have constitutional ramifications. And, and we certainly will work through this bill as we have uh, with its predecessor bill, which enacted the original uh, stage one of this two-stage process. I think just before the dinner adjournment, I was addressing the question of appointments to the uh, to the Electoral Commission. Uh, as, of course, uh, members will be aware, we have appointed uh, two uh, members to the, uh, to the new Commission, and that was in order to get it up and running uh, to take effect from the 1st of October this year, which it has, in fact, uh, taken effect and is already in play. Uh, there is a third appointment to be made, and I did take the opportunity at the end of the last um, session just to uh, inquire of the Minister as to how progress was going on the, uh, the third appointment, and I'm, I'm hoping that that won't be too far away uh, now. Um, so the new, the new Commission's in place. Uh, this particular uh, piece of legislation, though, doesn't take practical effect until after the next general election, and it is designed to uh, bring the third of the three independent entities that are being merged uh, in this process uh, into the new Electoral Commission, and that is the role of the Chief Electoral um, Officer. Uh, and I think that the government, um, uh, sorry, the Chief Registrar of Electors, and the reason that this was delayed and not included in the original uh, legislation was because in order to uh, properly uh, run a, a general election, which we have next year, and not only do we have a general election, but we have a referendum running alongside it, uh, it was really important that considerable lead in time for the transferring of that role uh, was allowed. And there simply wasn't time in this, in this year, calendar year, uh, to in fact transfer the Chief Registrar of Electors' responsibility for the electoral role to the new Electoral Commission uh, in time for the 2011 general election. So uh, the, this transfer of responsibility will happen on the 1st of October 2012. Uh, and that will be uh, just over a year after the next general election, I suspect. Uh, though there are those who think it will be just under a year from the next general election, but there's probably only one person in this House that knows precisely uh, what that date may be. And he probably hasn't worked that out yet himself, because he'll have to lick his finger and put it in the air and see how the polls are going and which way the wind's blowing before he makes that call. Um, but I think that it does make good sense to hold over the transfer of that function uh, so that considerable amount of leading time is allowed. Uh, the second thing that this bill does is allows for some amendments arising from the inquiry into the 2008 general election conducted by the uh, Justice and Electoral Committee. And uh, it is good to see uh, recommendations from our Select Committee review process uh, implemented. Uh, I know that I sat on the Justice and Electoral Committee at some stage in, 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 a, in a previous uh, part of my um, 20 years in Parliament, and we did one of these inquiries and had a number of uh, recommendations, but unfortunately they weren't kind of picked up by the, by the government of the day. But, but when they are picked up, I think it does uh, prove a very useful role that parliamentarians can play um, in looking uh, in a non-partisan way, dispassionately, at the uh, processes that, um, that may in fact uh, give rise to opportunities to strengthen the law. And in this particular case, it seems to me to use Department of Labor Im immigration information rather than just checking whether enrolled voters are entitled to be um, uh, uh, enrolled, uh, but actually checking as a preliminary step uh, whether an applicant for enrolment is, is qualified to be enrolled. And, and I think that just makes really good sense. So uh, it seems to me that this is a good use uh, of the uh, process of select committee inquiries and, and bringing about a uh, simple 
a change in the law that will streamline uh, the whole process and I think add integrity uh, to the role. Uh, the third thing that this piece of legislation does though, and I, I think this is the one that will excite uh, a certain amount of interest for those that are interested in such matters, and that is the, uh, the beginning of a, uh, an, an e-environment for our elections. Uh, and that starts with stage one online re-enrolment and updating. So this bill, if it is passed in its uh, current form, will enable voters who are already on the electoral roll to re-enrol or to communicate any changes about their enrolment details uh, via the internet. And as the Minister, I think, pointed out in his uh, comments on the introductory uh, uh, address that he made on this bill, he talked about the iGovernment log-on service as being the basis for uh, that uh, re-enrolment. Uh, and so that's stage one of a two-stage process, which ultimately will give uh, electors the option of full online enrolment. Now, I actually support this uh, the concept. I think it is important that we become relevant uh, to the, the, the new age, as it were, of, uh, of an, uh, electronic media. And I think it is important that if we are to encourage a, a generation who really only know that as a means of uh, communication, uh, that, that we really got to uh, come up to speed with the way that they now uh, do business with each other, uh, communicate with each other, and if we want to engage young people in the electoral process, then we have to find a way of en enabling them to, uh, to um, at least register their enrolment um, online in a way that is um, secure. Now, so as I said, the first the first step is covered by the iGovernment login service that's been developed by the Department of Internal Affairs. The second stage, though, to give somebody the ability to enrol fully online from start to finish, uh, there does have to be a much higher level of security. So that iGovernment login service is not sufficiently uh, strong or robust in order to uh, give the degree of security that we do need. And the reason we need the security is that our electoral rolls must have integrity. There is nothing that is more important than for people to be able to exercise their right to vote. Uh, it is actually a legal requirement to be on the roll, unless you're a friend of Paul Quinn's, um, and then, um, or sorry, somebody who's uh, been the victim of his bill. Um, but, but essentially, you have, you have to be on the electoral roll. It's a legal requirement to be on the electoral roll. Um, but it is the basis for your right to exercise your vote, your duty to vote. And so I think that uh, the government is going down the right track of actually seeking to secure a much, much more robust system for verification and uh, what they've described in the, uh, in the introductory comments to the bill, the Department of Internal Affairs is developing the iGovernment Identity Verification Service, the IVS, which requires users to verify their the identity online in real time. So this is probably not going to be the uh, give us your email address and we'll send you a little code that you can put in. Um, it's obviously going to be a much more uh, strengthened uh, 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 process than that. So I I'm certainly looking forward to the submissions that are going to come in on this. I know that there is a lot of interest in seeing an expansion of electronic media use in terms of our electoral system. I think it does help make it much more relevant to young people and for that reason I hope that when the bill is reported back we can see some progress in that regard. Very good.